All right, guys. Well, here is the striped pyro from Croatia, and uh, yeah, you can see she's still very slight. She doesn't have a ton of weight on her, um, and that's because she's a real weird feeder. Um, I didn't know this when I got her, but she's actually from 2013, so she's what seven, eight years old now, eight. Uh, this summer she'll be eight, I guess. Um, so, I'm just being honest. I'm not real sure if she's ever going to be able to reproduce. Um, I've been doing my best to feed her as heavily as I can. I kept her up all winter. Um, she didn't brewmate, uh, just so I could get some more weight on her. I didn't feel like she was in a good place to put her down, so I didn't. And uh, anyway, I'll give you guys a good look at her with the GoPro here. And uh, you can see she's a pretty flighty snake too. She's not not real happy to be handled, but she's very alert and healthy. Um, so yeah, that's a hard thing with snakes like these. You know, this is obviously a very valuable snake and something that uh, I really want to breed, but I also don't want to risk her health um, because you know maybe next year she'll just be pounding food like crazy and produce for me. So, you know, I, I don't want to take a risk breeding a snake this size, even though she probably could lay a clutch, you know, it's hard to say what the effect would be on her health. And uh, so anyway, I won't breed her this season unless she puts on some more size. Uh, she's got great length, obviously. You know, she's just as long as any pyro should be. She just needs to gain that weight and she'll be good to go. Uh, the good news is this last uh, feeding, what was that, three, four days ago, um, she ate a big uh, small mouse, like a small adult mouse, um, frozen thawed. A lot of times she eats little uh, piles of fuzzies and stuff like that, but yeah, she ate a really big meal and um, she had a good defecation, if you will. And uh, so I'm hoping that this springtime uh, just atmosphere that all the snakes are kind of picking up on is going to do us some favors and she's going to bulk up and produce but yeah imagine this bred to that other aber aberrant female obviously they're both girls so you can't bring them together but if I can reproduce that look from the Jeff Teal animal and then uh, get this look going man there's just so much you can do uh, with all these different uh, phenotypes in the Arizona mountain king snakes, it's pretty cool. I've never noticed that dark red blotch there before. That's pretty cool. So anyway, she's looking good. She's um, she's definitely looking better than she was before brumation, in my opinion. And uh, when I just got her out of the cage, um, I put my hand in there and she was ready to bite it like a food bite. So she's gonna get another meal today. I'm gonna just load her up with food and see if we can get a clutch out of her this year. I will show you guys her boyfriend, who's the um, reported het striped and then I'll show you my Russo aberrant and then we'll uh, talk about what kind of things we can do with those crazy projects. Okay and right here guys is the het striped or what is referred to as a het stripe. Um, it takes a lot of years to prove something recessive. Um, you know I think that the guy probably proved this gene genetic but I don't know necessarily if he did enough breeding to prove that it was recessive. Um, but either way, this guy is a sibling to that striped female, and so he's got the bloodline. And uh, what I'm going to do is use him for breeding um, with a number of different animals. He's going to breed to the um, Jeff Teal aberrant animal that I just showed you guys. Um, so I'll give you a, a closer look at this guy. 
um, and uh, yeah, give him a look. All right, here he is. High black and also high white. Um, he looks kind of like a zebra lion, honestly. Um, just a very, very, very nice looking pyro. Obviously, no real aberrancies to speak of other than that band and that band. I don't see anything else really. Um, there's one there. But uh, he's got the same sort of flighty attitude, which is kind of not typical for my pyros, at least in my experience. But um, he just came out of Bermation. He's been cooled. He's been fed and he's ready for the ladies. So let's see what we can get with this guy and hopefully we'll get some pos hets or, you know, maybe, maybe this uh, mutation will be passed on another way and have, you know, who knows, we could even get stripes first year. So I will show you guys the Russo aberrant next. Okay, and here is my Russo, Mike Russo's line of aberrant Arizona Mountain King Snake. You can see that they're a lot more orange. Um, and I think that's pretty typical. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with the Russo aberrants. They used to be around quite a bit when I first got into the hobby, but I don't really see them around a lot anymore. Um, so I'm gonna give you a closer look at this guy and then I'll show you um, his girlfriend who is from the Mike Russo line. She's just not a uh, visual aberrant and so Depending on how the gene works, hopefully I'll get some of these. Let's look at this guy a little bit more closely. So, here you are. As far as aberrant Arizona Mountain King Snakes, this guy is absolutely beautiful. Um, definitely, definitely one of my favorite morphs in the Pyros. Um, yeah, I wish I had more, um, so I'm glad that I'm going to be able to produce some myself this year, um, hopefully. But uh, what I want you guys to think about is how this is going to look with that Jeff Teal animal from the beginning of the video, um, with the striped, um, and then, you know, with Hypo-E and everything. This guy is so orange, He's he almost looks Hypo-E, it's crazy. Um, look at that neck pattern, I think that is so cool. Um... He also just exited Brumation, so um, I offered him Frozen Thawed last night and he refused it, so uh, he's always been more of a live feeder, but uh, that's alright. We'll get him fed up well and he'll be breeding to a number of females. Um, I haven't done my breeding groups yet for this 2021 season, so I'm really not sure. Uh, what all I'm going to do, but I am going to use this guy um, for a number of pairings, and I do think I'll put him with some of the recessive genes, so I will go grab his girlfriend. All right. I know I say all right on my videos way too much, I'm trying to stop that habit. This is a Russo aberrant line produced by Brad Chambers, and so it has the bloodline, it's just not really visually aberrant. Uh, you guys can get a closer look at it in just a second, but she's a 2017, so she just made it up to size, and um, I don't, I didn't brewmate her, um, so we'll see if she produces a clutch, but I am going to go ahead and pair her up. I'd really like to get some more Russo aberrant stuff, so give you guys a closer look. So she does have a couple of aberrancies, and she is a little more orange. Than a lot of pyros so she does kind of have that going for her look at that neck there's some aberrancy there there back here near the tail overall just a really nice looking pyro and uh, just yet another thing that we can utilize to get this aberrant uh, striped wacky look um, going on with our pyro projects so definitely excited about this girl as well 